everyone. Today in this video, we will see one more university question paper based on module 6 that is structural dynamics. So it is me, Dilruba came. Okay, let us straight away go to the question paper. Today we are going to analyze the questions from module 6 which was asked in December 2020-19. The first question is what is critical damping and magnification factor? And the second question was a problem. So let us see. Critical damping. So critical damping is a condition in free damped vibration in a single degree of freedom system or it is also known as SDOF system. The equation of motion for single degree of freedom system for a free damped vibration is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx plus is equal to zero. This zero indicates that there is no external force acting on the system and each term indicate this term indicate there is a damper and this term indicate there is a stiffness this term indicates the friction. Okay, so or inertia force. So this is the equation of motion for free damped vibration system. And since this is an equation of linear differential equation of second order, the solution for this equation is x is equal to a into e raised to lambda t. And when we substitute this x as a into e raised to lambda t and x dot which is dx by dt, as a into lambda e raised to lambda t and x double dot which is d square x by dt square which is a into lambda square e raised to lambda t in this equation then the equation will become m lambda square plus c lambda plus k is equal to zero uh, this equation was discussed in previous video i guess so you can refer if you want in detail and you know this is a quadratic equation and for every quadratic equation in order to find out the root we have equation lambda can be written as minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4 a c here a is m and c is k divided by 2 a okay and i can separately write lambda is equal to minus c by m plus or minus root of c square by 2 m will get in inside the root so it will become 4 m square minus 4mk by 4m square or uh, which can be written as lambda is equal to minus c by 2m plus or minus root of c by 2m whole square minus 4m and 4m will get cancelled it will become k by m now i am writing this c by 2m as n and k by m as p square so then my equation for the root will become lambda is equal to minus n plus or minus root of n square minus p square. Okay. So we can say there are two roots which is lambda 1 and lambda 2 minus n plus root n square minus p square and lambda 2 is minus n minus root n square minus p square. So let us see what uh, the critical damping is a condition when this n is equal to p. So a free damped system when the values n and p are equal then the root will be lambda 1 and lambda 2 will be minus n okay so they are the real negative and equal roots so the equation of the solution x is equal to a1 plus a2 e raised to lambda t where lambda 1 and lambda 2 are same that is lambda so this is the critical damping system and in this system the displacement of mass reaches zero asymptotically with time and this uh, damping is so great that there is no oscillatory motion happen in the system so this is what is known as critical damping condition and uh, i'm just noting it down the critical damping coefficient or damping factor or damping constant which is equal to n by p and it is termed as zeta and this is the figure for critical damping condition where x indicates a displacement or we can write this amplitude of the vibration and t indicates time. So this is the figure. You won't be getting a damping figure. You, the figure will be like this because the displacement will become zero 
symptomatically with time. So this is what is known as critical damping. Now let us see what is magnification factor. In forced vibration, that is, we if we have a damper and a spring mass and another external force F0. If this is a case of uh, forced damping conditions, we have external force, a damper and a stiffness, uh, a spring with stiffness K. In forced vibration, the maximum amplitude of dynamic displacement is given by the equation x maximum is equal to delta st by root of 1 minus eta square whole square a plus 2 eta zeta whole square. But delta st is a static displacement which is f0 by k and uh, eta is a tuning factor which is omega by p and zeta is critical damping ratio that we just see that is n by p. So this is how we define the maximum amplitude of a dynamic displacement in a forced vibration condition. And this dynamic displacement, the ratio of this dynamic displacement to static displacement is termed as dynamic load factor. Uh, you can expect this question. Uh, dynamic load factor is the ratio of dynamic displacement at any instant of time to the displacement that would have been produced by the static application of F0 or external force which is simply we can say static displacement. So dynamic displacement by static displacement is termed as dynamic load factor and it is given by the equation x by delta st. And delta st, we have uh, delta st's equation and x by delta st is sine omega t minus 5 where sine omega t minus 5 is a function of external force. So, the maximum value of this dynamic load factor is known as magnification factor. Or you look at this equation. When this equation becomes maximum? When this value becomes maximum. The sine maximum value of sine theta is 1, right? So, when the sine omega t minus 5 becomes 1, then that dynamic load factor is known as magnification factor. Or simply we can write the magnification factor it can be defined as the ratio of maximum dynamic displacement to static displacement. Where dynamic displacement to static displacement is dynamic load factor and maximum dynamic displacement to static displacement is magnification factor. So we can write the equation for magnification factor mu is equal to 1 by root of 1 minus zeta square whole square plus 2 eta zeta whole square. So just write it down, a dynamic load factor is equal, is equal to dynamic displacement divided by static displacement. Okay. So when this dynamic displacement value becomes maximum, it is termed as magnification factor. Now let us move to the next question. A vibratic system consists of a mass 10 kg, spring of stiffness 240 newton per meter and a damper with a damping coefficient 10 newton second per meter. Determine dynamic factor, natural frequency of damped vibration, logarithmic decrement, ratio of successive amplitudes, number of cycles after which initial amplitude reduced to 25%. So let us see. The given factors. It is given the mass is 10 kilogram and stiffness 240 newton per meter and damper coefficient c is equal to 10 newton second per meter. Now the first question is find out the dynamic factor. We know from this question itself we, it's uh, clear that this is a free damped vibration. Okay since external force is not mentioned but damper is there, damping coefficient is given, so damper is there, that means it's a free damped vibrational system. So the first question is to find out damping factor. We have the equation for damping factor, zeta is equal to n by p. And we know n is equal to c by 2m, so we have c and m value of m and c is given. So just substitute these values here, 10 and 2 times 10, which is 0.5, and p which is root by uh, k by m, p square was k by m, so p is root k by m. So root of 
Okay. See, uh, if the stiffness value is given, you should make sure that the unit is in Newton per meter. If it is in kilo Newton per meter, you must convert it into Newton per meter. So, that is the only thing you have to uh, careful about. So, P is equal to root 240 by 10, which is 4.89. Now, the damping factor is zeta n by P, which is 0 0.5 by 4.89, which is coming around 0.102. Now, the second question is to find out natural frequency of damp vibration. So, note down this equation. This is the equation for natural frequency of damped vibration. For undamped vibration, it is different. It is 1 by 2 pi root k by m. In natural frequency for damped vibration is root of p square minus n square. So, we have a value of p and n. Just substitute that values here and you will get the answer as 4.86. Now, the third question is logarithmic decrement. So, logarithmic decrement is the ratio of natural logarithm of ratio of two successive peak amplitude x1 and x2 in a free damped vibration that means say this is a damped vibration okay so this is the peak amplitude x1 and this is the peak amplitude x2 so this x1 by x2 ln x1 by x2 is termed as named as logarithmic decrement and we have several equation for that uh, we can either use 2 pi n root p square minus n square or we can use 2 pi zeta by root of 1 minus zeta square. All the equations are same. Just substituting this n by p. When you divide this equation with n by p, you will get this equation. Okay. So, this is the equation for logarithmic decrement. 2 pi zeta by root of 1 minus zeta square or 2 pi n root p square minus n square. So, we have uh, zeta equation value given so i'm just substituting the zeta value here i'm just taking this equation so substituting the zeta value 0 0.102 you will get the logarithmic decrement is equal to 0.644 so this is the logarithmic decrement now we are moving to the fourth question so this is fourth question that is the ratio of successive amplitude so we have from this equation uh, we just find out logarithm of x1 by x2 right so it is given 0.644 it, we have found out logarithm of x1 by x2 is 0.644 so x1 by x2 is just anti natural logarithm which is e raised to 0.644 is equal to 1.904 so this is the ratio of successive amplitudes now the last question that is fifth question Number of cycles after which initial amplitude reduced to 25 percentage. So, first you must know you should thorough about this logarithmic decrement. The logarithmic decrement indicates that it is the measure of amplitude decrement in the successive amplitude, or we can write z x1 by x2, ln x1 by x2, or x1 by x2 will be equal to x2 by x3 will be equal to x3 by x4 and so on. So, this is the case of a damped vibration or under damped system where each amplitude will decrease in a similar fashion. So, let us say, so the question is we have to find out the number of cycles after which the initial amplitude that is x1 is reduced to x25 percentage. So, let us say after uh, some uh, at some number of cycles the amplitude was xn and this xn is equal to 0.25 x1 so we don't know how much cycles are there in between x1 and x2 we just know that xn that is the xn or uh, nth amplitude have the value 25 percentage of x1 which is 25 by 100 of x1 that is 0.25 of x1 now, as we know the theory of logarithmic decrement, which is x1 by x2 is equal to x2 by x3, equal to x3 by x4, and so on, so on. So, x ray, xn minus 1 by xn is also equal to x1 by x2. So, we have 
this uh, equation. Now, let me multiply all these values, that is x1 by x2 into x2 by x3 into x3 by x4 and multiply with all these terms are multiplying. I'm just multiplying all these terms. What you will get? Look at here. x1 by x2 into x2 by x3. x2 will get cancelled. x2 by x3 into x3 by x4. x3 will be will get cancelled. x4 will get cancelled. x5 will get cancelled. x6 cancel. x7 cancel. And so on, so on, so on. What left is x1 and xn. So, when you multiply all these successive a ratio of the successive amplitudes, you will get x1 by xn, right? Similarly, if I multiply this again, and I'm just, since all these terms are equal to x1 by x2, or all the terms are equal, so am I just converting this x2 by x3 as x1 by x2, x3 by x4 as x1 by x2, x4 by x5 as x1 by x2, and just Converting all these terms into x1 by x2. What I will get? x1 by x2 whole raised to n minus 1. Look at here. If x1 by x2 and x1 by x2, x2 by x3, I'm just terming it as x1 by x2 again. So I have two values. So if I multiply these two values, we will get x1 by x2 whole square. Similarly, in similar fashion, if I look at here, x1 by x2, x2 by x3, x3 by x4, and at last, x raised to n minus 1 by x raised to n. So, the multiplication, when I convert all other terms as x1 by x2, I will get the answer as x1 by x2 whole raised to n minus 1. Okay. Now, we know at n minus 1 the cycle or at n minus 1, n minus 1 cycle will be here n minus 1 and it will, it will be xn. Okay. So, x1 by x2 whole raised to n minus 1 is also equal to x1 by xn. So, I'm just uh, x1 by writing it down. x1 by xn is equal to x1 by x2 whole raised to n minus 1. Now, let us look at the third question that was the ratio of successive amplitude. We have x1 by x2 value. So, I'm going to substitute this x1 by x2 value into this equation and the equation becomes 1.904 raised to n minus 1 is equal to x1 by xn. So, x1 by xn. xn is, we just found out that xn is equal to 25 percentage of x1. And that is, xn can be written as 0.25 of x1. So, I am just substituting this xn as 0.25 x1. So, x1 and x1 will get cancelled. So, it will become 1 by 0.25 which is 1 by 0.25. What is 1 by 0.25? It is 4. So, we can write 4 is equal to 1.904 raised to n minus 1. Now, I am taking logarithm on both sides. ln 4 is equal to logarithm of 1.904 raised to n minus 1 can be written as n minus 1 into ln 1.904. Okay. Then n minus 1 can be find out by dividing ln by ln 4 by ln 1.904. When you just calculate, you will get the value as 2.15. Then the n is equal to 2.15. This minus 1 will go to right hand side. Then it will become 3.15. So the number of cycles after which the amplitude becomes 25 percentage of initial amplitude is 3.15